Jonas Vingegaard, an absolutely outrageous season so far. First of all, he won a stage in the UAE Tour up to Jebel Jais. He managed to bin everyone in the last couple of minutes of the climb, which is really, really impressive. Then Copy Bartoli had some great results. He won the two stages and the overall and got a second place as well. So really, really strong. And then we had Basque Country where he finished second on general classification, um, as well as picking up a numerous top tens, which was huge from Jonas Vingegaard. So I made a little video about his best results so far in the Copy Bartoli and showing why I think he's going to be an absolute world hitter. Um, and it's going to be class to see where he goes. Copy Bartoli, stage two. We've got Mario Van Sevenen up the road. It's a really, really hard finish towards the final. Van Sevenen has launched pretty early on the climb. Uh, we've got a number of big hitters here. We've got even Sosa. We've got Jonas Vingegaard, who obviously the video is about. You've got Nick Schultz. And you've got uh, uh, Gabriel, I can't pronounce his name. The Eritrean lad from uh, Trek, who's also pretty strong. But these are the, the lead three, Schultz. Vingegaard so so they're absolutely launching it trying to chase back Van Seven and this is the first proper like GC stage the stage before this was won by Jakob Mrachko and this really is where you can see how strong Vingegaard is because these guys are pretty pretty strong I think that's Sergio Hanau in the background trying to get across and like Sosa is really good at these sort of like Italian races like this where they've got shot um short sharp finishes at the end he's pretty good at it Van Seven and I mean he's outrageous as well he's gone really well in the Basque Country also um, and I should have probably released this video earlier because people would have been like, oh, Charlie, you actually know you're cycling because you watch Copy Bartoli. But this race was a really good form indicator of who's going to go well in Copy Bartoli. Like, Vingegaard was really, really strong in this. But it also shows that the level in Copy Bartoli was actually really high because, you know, if it wasn't that high, then obviously people, when they go to a World Tour stage race like Tour of the Basque Country, then, you know, they wouldn't have been able to compete. But actually they could. And this is it. This is the final sort of ramp up to the line they go into sort of a cobbled paved section here um, that go on the on a gutter in the in middle of it. And Van Sevenen looks like he got this. And Sosa now is going to absolutely launch. You can see he comes on the inside of Van Seven and destroying it. And I thought, to be honest, watching it live, I really thought he was going to have it. But Vingegaard managed to stay on his wheel. And I think the thing with Vingegaard, he's actually got a good punch. I know in the Basque Country, he didn't show the best punch um, when, when old, uh, what's his face, won it? Uh, 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 Izaguirre won it, sorry. When Izaguirre won, he didn't actually do that well. But look here, comes around uh, Sosa with no worries at all at the final. And like, that is a pretty strong acceleration to have at the end and wins the first stage in Coppe Bartoli quite convincingly in the end, to be honest. And everyone else is sort of floundering in their wake. Uh, I think that was Ben Hermans who had a decent ride there. Van Sevenen um, coming a lot across the line with all the rest of them. Like my mate Paul Double, I think, is just coming across the line around now. Um, so pretty, you know, pretty strong ride from Van Seven. You can see, oh, sorry, from Vingegaard. You can see here, like the the gap is is very very strong. So after this, obviously he's got to back it up day after day after day in a stage race, which is pretty important. Um, and he, he seems to do that because the following stage, um, well, sorry, two stages later, we had, we finished up to San Marino, and it was a similar sort of finish, um, slightly different. But you can see, like you know, the gap he put onto everyone else in such a short amount of time. Uh, was pretty pretty remarkable to be honest, and I, I was quite um quite surprised that Sosa, as I said before, was um couldn't beat him. But anyway, here's the finish up to San Marino. Um, so I had a bit too many highlights there, and it's quite a big group to be fair. You can see even haters in the white jersey, even Sosa's there again. Astana go on the front, and they want to make it really hard because I think people realise that Vingegaard is actually pretty good. And okay, this stage, this race isn't isn't easy at all, but there's not one significant mountain top finish. It's more like a lot of short punchy stage, like a whole stage would just be really punchy. Like, you know, it was like 4,000 meters of climbing, about 160K. But they didn't really go up any huge, huge climbs. It was more just consistent up and down, up and down. Um, so there's a taxi here, Van Seven is following one from Androni Sidemek. And Vingegaard's looking pretty comfortable on the wheel. And this finish is not super, super hard. Um, you know, it's just a consistent sort of 6 to 8%. It's not crazy, crazy steep at any point um, until sort of more more towards the final, which means that to be able to, like, attacking people, um, it's not too hard to follow in their wheels. Um, and you can see Vingegaard's on his own, no teammates, but, but it seems pretty comfortable at the honest. He's not, like, leaning on anyone else. He's just doing it, saying, I'm the race leader. I'm going to take control of this. I'm going to show, you know, who's boss. I'm also going to sh show that, like, you know, I'm going to, I want to win this race. I want to win the stage. I don't just want to, you know, do a classic. Oh, if you're too far and down on GC, we'll let you go. He's like, nah, I want to win the stages, which I think is a pretty good attitude to have from Vingard. Here goes Gabriel Zenia. I can't remember his name. I'm really sorry. 
um, and he, he tries to attack here on the left, but it's not going to happen. And then on the right, we've got a starter man going with Sosa, but Vingegaard just looks really comfortable on the wheel. And you don't realize this is actually quite close to the finish. And this is where it starts to get a little bit steeper, sort of more towards 10%. You can see they're slowing down a bit. Ethan Hay is on the wheel. So, you know, like not necessarily one for the pure climbers, but Vingegaard shows that he's still got punch. Um, and can outpunch these guys at the end because look at this bit on the flat part now Vingegaard in the saddle just absolutely driving Nick Schultz coming on the left hand side but can't get close to old Vingegaard who just yeah in everyone it was it was really impressive like because he went from a long way out like he wasn't you know on the wheel or whatever like they sprinted a long time it was like a 40 second sprint and Vingegaard had absolutely no worries um, with dispatching everyone here comes the rest of the bunch and you can see he's put a decent amount of time with some on some solid riders but we watch the highlights again Senor Astana, um, I'll just figure out his name here, sorry, hang on a minute. Uh, Javier Romo for Astana just gets pipped at the line by Nick Schultz and Ethan Hayter as well. Um, pretty strong ride again from Ethan Hayter, but I mean, on that finish, I would have backed Hayter every single day of the week, but I think it just shows goes to show how strong Vingegaard is, that he can beat people who are winning, okay, not pure bunch sprints, but, you know, competitive bunch sprints, reduced bunch kicks. For sure. Um, so, yeah, he's super strong. And again, like... Okay, he didn't have it by miles like the the stage previously, but but he had it by a pretty pretty decent one. Anyway, this is the last stage of the race, and um, they're just bringing back the early break, which had Ben Swift in it, and Vingegaard here is you know he knows that basically all he has to do is just make sure no one goes up the road uh, too much, and um, he's on the front a lot here, making sure. And Javier Romo again from Astana attacks. Um, we're gonna see some big attacks actually on this stage. It's pretty. Pretty crazy, to be honest, um, how exciting this last stage was. And I, I would, really would recommend just to watch the whole stage. It's on Tiz Cycling, so 10, 10 out of 10 would, would recommend to watch. Just because no one really had any teammates. Uh, I think Quick Step did. They had Archibald and uh, Van Sevenham, but pretty much no one else did, really, um, when it came to the final selection. So it meant it was at a really exciting race. Um, and because the finish of the climb was a little bit far away from the, from the actual... Um, from the, the sorry the finish of the climb was far away from the actual finish therefore it made it exciting because it's not just going to wait for a bunch of sprint. people are going to want to go early people want to go on the downhill etc etc um but the decisive you know the decisive uh group was really made on the climb and you can see here there's only like 10 15 people who are really going to be able to hang at this sort of sort of wattage at this time there was a stage five in the race i mean it's like you know at this point, it's pretty hard, but Ben Herman goes here and he just absolutely launched. I think this is when you can see the sort of World Tour guys are really strong in the final day. Like if you look at the, the difference in the group um, between maybe the stage before and this one, Ben Herman is absolutely really drilling it. But my mate Paul Double's still there. What an absolute legend. Uh, we had an interview with him. He can see him on the track rider there trying to still just keep in contact. But he's absolutely drilling at Ben Herman's here. He's trying to drop everyone. I guess he knows that in GC wise, he's out of the competition. But if he can, you know, get it down to a reduced bunch kick, then he's got a really good chance of winning. He's, he's okay. He's not a pure sprinter, but he's he's pretty punchy, Ben Herman's. And you'd back him over like the majority of climbers because he's obviously a bigger guy. Um, and he sort of eases off there and then goes again over the top of the climb, really trying to just drive it. And Vingegaard is third wheel here, and I don't think he looks like he's in any bother at all. You can see further back the acceleration. Um, over the top. I mean, that's the classic point is always over the top is where you can put gaps in because people expect it to go down and also just the change in speed. Like, you know, you're going 20k an hour and then you're going 40k an hour. It can be hard because you have to accelerate. Um, you know, you can't drive the same watts. You've got to accelerate up to it um, if the guy in the front is absolutely drilling, which Ben Hermans is now. Um, and then going into the downhill, it wasn't really like a, you know, a pure downhill. There were some kickers on it, which obviously leads to uh, attacks which is it makes it exciting and also makes it for Vingegaard he's actually quite vulnerable here because he's got no teammates there's a lot of guys who okay they're not you know not straight on MGC but they're, they're like within if if um they went and there were two or three of them working and he just got put on the front he could not bring them back so he's got to be really attentive here and think okay yeah, who am I going to follow um and just you know all up make sure that he has a great Great race tactics, and also just, I mean, yes, he has to be the strongest on the day, which luckily for him, he was one of the strongest on the day, so it wasn't really an issue um, towards the end that he could follow everyone, and you can see Ethan Hayes has managed to make this across as well. well. Um, and Vingard's on the front now pulling, I guess he's just like, okay, the smaller the bunch group, if I just, you know, the, the longer I pull towards the finish, you know, people aren't going to attack, because if he just sits on the back, which you'd say, okay, he's going to save energy, while well, people are going to attack. So if he actually rides on the front, you know, just easy-ish, like, you know, not too hard, just keeping the pace that it's not like so easy. Um, but here comes Mikel Onore on the right hand side of the screen. And he decides that it's time to launch it on the downhill. 
and my oh my was did they enjoy their super tucking this was obviously before first of april so they're allowed to super tuck and bingy guard here is follows him and if you look at javier romo he's the reason around this corner why they get away because he can't follow them air super tucking around corners and you just see that javier romo is not super tucking maybe he doesn't know that it's, it was still allowed but around this corner look at the distance that honore and bingy guard put into javier romo chasing and done thanks for coming that's it um Javier Romo then is like, oh, there's a decent gap. I'm not going to close that. Like, if you think about it, if you've let that go, gap open, you should close it. But he's not going to round this corner as well. Honore is on the super tuck round the corner. Absolutely mental. And this is this is the point where if you've got two people who are committed to just risking everything on the descent. And then when it comes to the flat, they're just going to ride together. You're not going to bring them back um, unless you've got a really concerted chase. And with that many people, you just never will. Because like my mate Paul Double said, he was like... Um, he said that, you know, he's not going to chase. He's a Conti guy, like, you know, there's World Tour people there. And if he's not going to chase, then that means that Conti guy, the, um, the World Tour guys aren't going to chase that much. So obviously this came to the finish. It was Honoré versus Vingegaard. I think Vingegaard just, you know, compared to Honoré, Honoré is a pretty punchy guy. And he comes around him pretty easily in the end, to be honest. But I, I'd say you might think, okay, Vingegaard's maybe not the most punchy guy. And that is true. But I think for a climber, he is pretty punchy. And also, he didn't need to compete. You could give him the stage. He probably said, I'll give you the stage if you if you keep working. And then he, they've got the GC wrapped up. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video about Jonas Vingegaard. I think he's going to be an absolute world beater in the, in the future. As long as he leaves Jumbo Visma, because they're not a great team, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, he's super, super strong. And really happy to see that um, he's done well after impressing in smaller races like Coppia Bartoli. So um, yeah, cheers for watching. As I said before, leave us a like and subscription and all the rest of it. Very much appreciated. And we've got some good ones coming. We've got this new bloke that UAE signed for five years. Straight out the juniors. And he's outrageous. I'm going to do a video on him because he's class. So yeah, see you in the next one.